Hello, welcome to Eden Hope Academy's Writers Club and my story is beautiful and this is our second week and we are talking about short paragraphs this week about getting to the essence and the, the beauty of writing a short paragraph that tells you volumes and volumes of information. And so all of us can write a long thing, like um, Abraham Lincoln once said that he would have written a shorter letter to someone, but he didn't have time. And what did he mean by that? He meant that if he had thought out his words carefully and pulled the essence of what he was thinking about, that he could have shared what he had to say in far fewer words. But since he didn't have that kind of time, he had to write out a longer letter to the person. And so that's what I want you to be able to do after this lesson. And I want you to be able to think about what it means to really pull out the essence of what you're talking about. And the first thing that you usually need to do is start with an action. So in each of the books that you're going to write next semester, if you choose to write books, we're going to do a kind of a pattern, and you're going to start out with something that's action, something that's happening. So Anna was excited. It was the first day of Eden Hope Academy. She loved racing her brothers, Bo and Jack, through the doors of the small community church. They skidded to a stop in the hallway, narrowly missing Mr. Steve, the children's pastor at the church. Since it was their job to set up tables and chairs, they were used to being the only people in the building. Good morning, Mr. Steve, Anna panted as she slowed down. Have a great day, kids, Mr. Steve said as he smiled. Now, what do you know already from just this one paragraph? Well, you know that there are children in a family that they probably homeschool because they're setting stuff up. They probably need it. They meet in a small community church that she, what do you know about Anna from this, from this paragraph? Is she kind of like, or is she like full of life and spacey? She's, we call her the little stinker princess. So she's very full of life and spicy and, and she's always running and doing something fun. And you know that uh, Mr. Steve, what do you know about his personality? Is he a grouchy old man or is he very, is he very kind to the students? Did you say that he was kind? I bet you did. He's a very kind man. And so we know so much from the, just these words. And that is getting at the essence. But I know you could write even better than this. And so what I want you to do is pause for a moment. And as a group, I want you to write a paragraph about the boys who were trapped in the, in the um, cave in Thailand. But I just want you to write one paragraph as a group, as your class, and I want it to be from the boy who, there was one boy in that mine who actually lived in Miramar, which is another country, and he and hit the place that he lives is a state that's not recognized by anyone. So he actually is not eligible for a passport. He's not eligible for a lot of things. And his parents wanted him to have an education. So he's actually living at a Christian church in Thailand so that he can go to school. And then he walked into the cave with his teammates and it wound up with a national issue. But this boy who doesn't have a country, couldn't get a passport, is extremely poor and is living at a church so that he can be educated in a different country. He speaks several different languages. And so he would probably be the least likely person that you would think of to really save this group of boys or really help them. But he actually was a person who could speak English and he was able to be their interpreter to the British divers who came and helped rescue these boys. So I want you to say one moment in the cave from this boy's perspective. I'm going to throw his name up. And from his perspective, and so I want you as a group to get into the essence. So I want you to think about every aspect. Was he hungry? 
what did it smell like in the cave? Was he scared? Were his friends scared? What did it taste like in the cave? Because they had to lick water off of the walls in order to drink. There was water coming up. What did they think when that happened? It was dark for nine days. So how did they feel in that darkness for nine days where they didn't even know how many days had passed before those British divers came? So I want you to write one powerful class paragraph and I want you to just do an amazing job on that paragraph. So pause me now and spend some time writing that paragraph. Are you back? I'm so glad. Okay, so we're going to go to our next powerful paragraph and we're going to do it on our book um, The Iliad by Nick McCarty and I just love this book because of the, the verbal imagery that's in it. And so I'm going to read this paragraph to you. It's under the, um, it's on page 25. It's called Agamemnon's Anger. And it's the smoke rose thick from the Greek funeral pyres, where the bodies and weapons of dead warriors burned. It swirled across a battlefield in front of the Trojan gates. Ooh. Do you guys like feel that? I just feel that. All right, so now what in just that very short paragraph have you learned? I want you to pause, and I want you to go through this paragraph. We'll leave it up here, and I want you to think about everything that you've learned from just these words, and how much, if you were a Lincoln, how much longer could you write this out? So pause me now. Are you back? I bet you came up with ones that are even more than I have. But some of the things that I that I got out of that paragraph is, first of all, that the smoke rose thick. So that means that there was a lot. That wasn't just one or two soldiers. It also tells me there was a battle the day or the weeks before, and that the that the Greeks were probably defeated in it, or that didn't go well for them. It also, it feels depressing. It feels like, oh, this did not go well. This was not a good start. It says that the it swirled. It's kind of ominous. A swirl. It sounds bad. It's not it rose like you think, oh, well, that the dove rose to heaven. No, it swirled. It does. It kind of sounds like ooh, like that, like creepy. And it says out in front of the Trojan gates. It's almost like they've lost their their umph. They've lost their care. They're not even hiding it over here, so the Trojans don't see how many were defeated in this battle. They're just doing it right in front of the Trojan gates. They no longer care that the Trojans know how much they were defeated. And the gates, what does that say to you? That says to me that the gates were closed, that they hadn't penetrated, they hadn't gotten through those gates. So there's so much right here in this one paragraph that's so powerful. So now I want you to rediscuss it with your class a little bit, read it again, and see, see if you can write this paragraph again and change up the words and maybe add another character or so and come up with something that equally just goes in and just grabs your reader and helps your reader to understand exactly what's happening in just one paragraph. So I want you to do that as a class. And then at home tonight or this week, I want you to write one paragraph. And that one paragraph can be on those boys that were trapped in the mine, or they can be on a life event of yours that was extremely impactful, or it can be on another historical event that was just extremely impactful in your life. And I want you to work and rework and work again those words of that one paragraph, not a page. You can't be like Abe Lincoln. You just have to condense it to one paragraph and I want it to be so, um, so rich. I want to taste in your paragraph. I want to feel it in your paragraph. I want a chill to go on my arms in your paragraph. I want to be able to, to go, ooh, after reading your paragraph or have a tear in my eye after reading your paragraph. And then I want you to pair that paragraph 
with a picture that represents it. And remember, the picture can be, if it's a, if it's like a chilly, ooh, paragraph, maybe it can just be a picture of a tree at night. It doesn't have to be exactly about your topic. Or maybe if you were talking about the boys in Thailand, maybe it can just be a headlight of a diver, something like that. So think of something that is artistically captures the essence in your picture as well. And once again, if you've signed up for the the Writers Club, where you're going to have your own book written, then go ahead and email me your paragraph and your picture to kim at edenhopeacademy.com. And if not, then get your mom to print that out and start a book for you at home. So I look forward to seeing you next week. Goodbye.